Hello and welcome to Boulevard 40. My name is Kenya and today I'm going to be giving you a review of this here study guide that I've been using to read the Bible every day. This is the same study guide that I have mentioned during my uh, daily Bible readings on my YouTube channel, first on uh, 40 Entrepreneur Drive and then here on this dedicated channel, Boulevard 40. The book is A Woman's Guide to Reading the Bible in a Year, A Life-Changing Journey into the Heart of God. The author is Diane Stortz, and this is the digital download version. It is available in print, but for convenience sake, I chose the digital download because I can access it on my phone, which is what I'm doing now. I can access it on my laptop, which is how I've been presenting it through a screen share and I can access it on a tablet or, of course, a desktop. Uh, on the laptop, it can be accessed through Kindle Cloud Reader. So let me tell you why I like this and why I recommend it to people wanting to challenge themselves to read the Bible in one year. Um, one quick note, there is nothing gender specific about this particular guide other than the fact that it was written by a woman and she wrote it because she was in a Bible study group of other women. Other than that, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty gender neutral. So if you're a man and you just happen to, maybe your wife uses this or you, you know, know, have a sister or something like that that uses it, you can use it. There's nothing at all gender specific about it within the text. So yeah, other than the cover, <laughs> It's pretty much for anybody. So I do recommend this as a study guide for people wanting to challenge themselves to read the Bible in a year. Let me give you a breakdown um, for the Kindle version, which is what I'm using. So I showed you the cover already. Let me show you the table of contents, how it's broken down. So it will give you a breakdown week by week what you need to be reading and every week has a theme there's like an overall theme of what you will be reading per the bible and that is what is written here next to each of these weeks so we have beginnings talking about genesis we have faithfulness and deceit still in the book of genesis we have news of a new kingdom which is actually in a, in the new testament talking about the kingdom of heaven um, I am that week is talking about God himself. A holy nation is, you know, the nation of Israel being set aside. No other gods. I believe that's back in either Deuteronomy or Leviticus talking about the different commandments. And so each of these weeks has its own theme. And that's what that represents there on the side. So here we are in week 33. As of today, Monday, August 10th, the recording of this video, I am in week 33. So I would go here where it says conversation and confrontation, and it will give you in blue, the week number in pink, the theme of that week's reading. And in black and white, it will be a summary of what you will be reading. I'm reading about Job right now. And it tells you here. And also if you turn the page, um, there, what to expect. And in that gold box on the left hand side, will be what you are reading for the week. It doesn't say Monday through Sunday, but that is what is indicated by each of those lines preceding the book. So there's an underscore, and then you see Job 13 through 16, underscore Job 17 through 21, and it goes on down. So that first line would be Monday, the second line would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Sunday down at the bottom. And that is the order that you read it in. The cool thing about this is there are no dates. So you can actually start this any particular week. Whenever you decide, hey, I want to read the Bible in a year, that Monday you would start and you would just start right there at the top and then go on, go on the way through. On the right hand side of this gold box, it says checkpoints. And those are like highlights or special events or things that are going, you are going to be reading about, specific things that you're going to be reading about. Uh, miserable comforters, that's Job's friends coming to sit with him and comfort him and give him words of wisdom. Job's redeemer, the whirlwind, Leviathan, beautiful daughters. Uh, the only thing that I have noticed is at least on three different accounts, and I'm already in week 33, um, so three out of 33 isn't bad, but I was expecting these bullet points to be in order 
99% of the time they are, every once in a while they're not. That's probably not going to be a big deal for you. But as I was presenting, I was reading, you know, I'm reading the Bible to a live audience or to a public audience on my YouTube channel. And I'm presenting this and telling them, you know, keep your ears perked up. And this is what we're going to be finding. And every once in a while, I would be expecting to hit one of these bullet points, thinking that I missed it when it was maybe just a little bit out of order. So that's just something to be aware of. But every once in a while, they will not be presented in order. At the bottom of this gold box, there's a quote by J.C. Ryle. The quote says, is the Bible the word of God? Then let us all resolve from this day forward to prize the Bible more. That's just one of many people who are quoted in this particular book publication. I don't know who J.C. Ryle is. I don't know who John Townsend is, but there is a uh, famous quote or a quote from a person at the bottom of each of these gold boxes. More than likely, I will do a follow-up video so I can figure out who these people are. I don't know if they're fellow authors or uh, Bible scholars or anything like that, but there will be a quote at the bottom of each of these. Toward the front of the book, you will find the books of the Bible, the books of the Bible laid out and categorized here for your convenience. They are in order uh, as they are presented in the Bible, and there are category titles here for you to understand what the books represent. So we've got the first five books are the law. We've got these other books here at the top, which is the history of the nation of Israel. We've got books of poetry. Um, the book of Job is a book of poetry, which I did not know that, along with Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. We've got the major prophets, the minor prophets, the gospel, the history, Paul's letters, a letter to Jewish Christians, letters to the entire church and the revelation of John. I think this is really neat because not many people, I didn't realize uh, that the Bible was broken up like this. I didn't realize there were history books and I just knew it was the old Testament and the new Testament. That's all I knew. I didn't know that there were books of the law. Uh, books of the prophets are all put together. I didn't know that. So that's pretty nice that they broke that down there. Towards the end of this book, you will see a timeline of Old Testament events such as creation, the creation, the flood, the Tower of Babel, the birth of Abram, birth of Isaac, etc. You'll also see a timeline of New Testament events such as the birth of John the Baptist, birth of Jesus, John baptizing Jesus, um, the apostles all the way through. You will see a breakdown of the rulers of Israel from the time they were a united kingdom when nation, the nation of Israel was all together through the first three rulers, Saul, David, and Solomon. And then you'll see the breakdown when it was uh, divided into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern key, kingdom of Judah. And we have the rulers here and the time periods that they were ruling. This is a really good reference point because as you are reading through, uh, as you're reading through Kings and Chronicles, they do refer to each other back and forth, such as Zechariah was ruling during the such and such reign of Amen, and Ahaz was ruling in the such and such time when Joha jo Jehoahaz was on the throne. And so it's good to kind of look back and refer to who was who at a particular time. And finally, at the back of this book, you have the simplified version of the reading plan broken down by weeks. Week one, you're reading the book of Genesis. Week two, you're reading the book of Genesis. Week three, you're finishing up Genesis and starting in the New Testament, which is my favorite part about this. You're going to read an entire book from any given uh, testament, old or new. When you finish that book, you're going to go to the opposite uh, testament. So you're going to finish up an, an Old Testament book, and then you're going to read a complete book out of the New Testament. Then you're going to go back to the Old Testament and read a complete book. Once you finish that book, you're going to go back to the New Testament. And you're going to go back and forth until you have completed each book from that particular testament. 
The only time that there is a break in this Old Testament, New Testament is when you are presented with the book of Psalms, which starts here in week 14. Week 14, you're going to read the book of Psalms, which is one of those poetry books. And you're, you may not know this. I didn't know this, but the book of Psalms is actually five books. It's broken up into five books. So this is one of the books of Psalms. Was that Psalms 1 through Psalms 41 is one book of Psalms. When you finish that, then you're going to go to the New Testament, read the book of Acts. And once you have completed the book of Acts, go back to the Old Testament. And then you just bounce back and forth. Old, new, old, new. And in about six more weeks, you're going to be reading the book of Psalms again. I've that's, that's my favorite part. I thought it was going to be a little confusing reading the Old Testament and then the New Testament and then the Old Testament, but actually they really, really do complement each other. In the New Testament, they will oftentimes refer back to the Old Testament as the law or the prophet so-and-so said, and then you'll go back to the Old Testament and you'll read something like uh, a, something that is being prophesied in the New Testament. So they really do complement each other. And it's a good way to get through the Bible reading one book in the Old Testament followed by one book in the New Testament. On the back, in the resources section, they do talk about getting Bible dictionaries and things like that. I do use a Bible dictionary. I use the Nelson's Compact Bible Dictionary, which is extremely helpful. If for no other reason, it will help you to know how to properly pronounce different biblical names. So I do suggest getting a Bible dictionary. The link to the, my Bible dictionary is in the description. Here's some website and apps that you can uh, use as online tools here in the reference section. There are a couple of other uh, citations to different literature and some other websites resources. Speaking of resources, thebibleinoneyear.com is my website that I am developing to go along with this channel to provide resources for you if you are looking to read the Bible in one year. On my resources page, I have uh, some elements here that will, should hopefully provoke some questions and provide some answers as to why you are not already reading the Bible and why you should. And I've got some reading plans on here. This is my reading plan, Diane Stortz's A Woman's Guide to Reading the Bible in the Year. If you come to this website, you can flip through it, just like uh, I was showing you the digital version. And that is also an affiliate link, so if you choose to buy it, through no extra cost to you, I will get um, some financial compensation for that. There's also a list of some other Bible study tools here. Don't forget to check out your own Bible at the beginning or the end. There may very well be a Bible study guide in your own Bible. This is just a photo of one of my Bibles that I've got. And it says here, read your Bible through in a year. This is a morning and evening reading schedule there. So you may already have a reading plan in your own Bible that you can check out. If you found this video to be helpful, uh, let me know with a thumbs up and share it with someone else that can benefit from it. And I thank you for your time and I will see you in the next Bible reading or Bible topic video.